Now I save the configuration file and now the installation process differs from that of the setup installation. If you install using the automated setup file, you would have no control where Windows stores which files in which directories. Using the zip installation, you will need to open a DOS window as administrator. Administrator privileges are paramount to a successful server installation. We need to go to the Firebird 1.5 directory and then to the bin directory c slash fb slash fb15 underscore w32 slash bin here you can see a number of back batch files using these batch files we are able to install a firebird server extremely simply and quickly it is also extremely secure for example if you need to install a firebird server on various machines and your end users are not necessarily capable of following a setup program without activating or deactivating the options they shouldn't, then you can combine the setup with the zip file content and integrate it in your application. It is also worth mentioning here that the Firebird license model is always, without exception, free of charge. You will never incur license fees of any kind a major difference to other open source databases such as MySQL which is now owned by Oracle. Here you need to study the license conditions carefully to ascertain when you have to purchase a license. We are going to install the Firebird Super Server which we will do using the batch file install underscore super dot bat. The Super Server is an architecture with one central process which deals with all queries sent by the Firebird clients. This process uses a central cache and central access to the database files. The super server has the slight disadvantage that it does not use multiple CPUs, which is nowadays fairly standard. However, it does have its strengths, particularly where a large number of users are working on one and the same server. Namely, that a single cache is available for all users, which can lead to better performance. Please note, if you are using a machine with two CPUs, then this is not a valid reason for deploying the classic server which supports multiple CPUs. Because on a dual-core machine, there are obviously many operating system services running parallel, so that the super server offers the same performance as the classic server. If you are using a quad-core machine, or even a quadruple quad-core installation with 16 CPU cores, then the classic server would be preferable. Because the classic server starts a different process for each client connection. These are spread across the processors using the full capacity of each of them. There is unfortunately no secret recipe to decide the choice of server. In certain situations, the only solution is to simply t test both to see whether your software runs better on the classic or the super server. There are certain areas that you need to take into consideration. For example, with the cache settings. The classic server cache should be set at a much lower level than that of the super server as it applies to each connection. If not, you may encounter problems. But more about that in one of our future tutorials. So. I run the install underscore super dot bat as administrator, which calls various command line tools which, for example, enter the Firebird server in the registry, and the Firebird Guardian, which monitors the Firebird server process. And here you can see the various instance names. We can take a closer look at these and see which services are installed on which machine. Here is the service, called the Firebird Guardian. Following this, we can see the instance names and the Firebird server default instance. This default instance name is determined by Firebird 1.5 and you can't alter it. Well, there are a few tricks, but it isn't simple. If you want to install Firebird 1.5, you can only use it under this name. 
and this is one of the advantages of Fibre 2.1. Here I have copied the Fibre 2.1 32-bit version into this directory, as I will later install the Windows 32-bit client on this machine for 32-bit applications. If we compare this to other platforms, it is much simpler because the Fiber client really only consists of this client file. It is only 440 kilobytes and there are only, depending on what sort of database connection you have to the server, a few additional files necessary. But the DLL is the most important file. And even the Fiber client installation is so simple, it is no comparison to, for example, the installation of an Oracle or Microsoft client. We will now install Fiber 2.1 as a Windows 64-bit program, alongside our installed Fiber 1.5. In this directory, you can see that I have added an S, as I intend to install the super server. Again, I will select a logical port number. We, the IB Expert team, have given a lot of thought to numbering Firebird ports. Here we have a 64-bit super server. Generally, if you install a 64-bit server, you will not have a 32-bit of the same version running alongside it, and you should always use 64-bit when you can, as you are guaranteed improved performance. So this 64-bit super server should occupy this port. If you'd like to read up on TCP IP ports, I recommend you consult Wikipedia, which offers a good explanation of this subject. So far, we've only installed Firebird 1.5 32-bit version. And if we take a look at the processes running, we can see the Guardian with the name extension asterisk 32, which indicates that we have a 32-bit program running. This tutorial now continues with Firebird Installations for Professionals, Part 3.